Good morning, ladies. If you could just turn in your Bibles, because I know you've got them right there, ready to go, to Mark. That would be super. We'll be starting there a little bit. Um, as we were getting ready for this, as I was getting ready for this lesson, I loved it. There were many things that went through my mind as we were um, studying this week. But first, I just wanted to have us take a deep breath. I know many of us rushed here. Many of you with young children were getting out the door, or maybe work schedules, or you get that phone call. So let's just go ahead and take a deep breath and just pray to the Lord and offer this morning to him. Our great God and Father, we praise your holy name. We are grateful for this morning. Thank you for your word that we can learn. I just pray, Lord, you have something to say to each one of us today, and I pray that you would open our hearts and our ears and our minds to hear that. We give it to you in Christ's name. Amen. So, as we are talking about differences this morning, a couple of things came to my mind. First, before we started, And one of the things that I really appreciated about this and what was said in our lesson was to remember that as we are talking about the different personalities and the different ways that we all tend to relate, that we don't want to, we don't want to put somebody in a box. We don't want to box ourselves in. Because the truth is, as we'll be talking about the different personalities here in just a little bit, um, sometimes we're not just one. Did you see that? If some of you were able to take some of the assessments, that you kind of overlapped, or you were some of this and some of that. And and I just wanted to uh, say, let's remember that just because you scored really high in this area, that that's all you are, or that's all we can be. Um, Just to keep our thoughts open in that way. And to remember that we can, um, just because we're really high in one area, doesn't mean that we can't grow in the others, right? As I was thinking about the different personalities and um, how they all affect, and like um, Lorene said, we first were introduced to these, and many of you maybe, if you raise your hand, it, it, through marriage, through maybe uh, a marriage class or something like that. Maybe you got familiar with that. And so you looked at the different personality types in that, re- in that regard, right? And this morning, we get to expand that, to think of that and how we relate to each other as women, how we relate as girlfriends to each other, and take that into friendship. And I really appreciated that um, that thought. And I don't know about some of you, but going through this study has brought up um, maybe some past relationships uh, with girlfriends that maybe have ended poorly, or there's still there's some strife there. And I was just thinking, wow, these differences that we come with to the table, how they affect our lives, right? How they affect how we relate. And as we get a better picture of us, we, we want to focus that out and, and pray for a greater understanding of someone else. That's the goal here, as I see it, for this week. And I want to start kind of like uh, we're going to bookend here, and at the beginning, before we start talking about differences, I just wanted to go to these words of Jesus. Because there can be a lot of fun with the differences, personalities. I love that. Don't you love finding out just a little bit about yourself, about others, and thinking, oh, this is her, oh, I get it now, yeah, yeah. I love that part of it, but also can come up a little bit of the negative part. All of it, ladies, all of our whole perspective as we study God's word. And I see these personalities as um, insights, as just a way that we can grow in our relationship to him and to each other. 
And I just wanted to put this umbrella over our study this morning, if you will. This umbrella of Mark chapter 12, verses 29 through 31. Some of the scribes were coming to Jesus and they were asking him, and as always, they were trying to trap him and trying to uh, make him stumble or say something that they could say, aha, you're wrong. So this was one of those. And one of the scribes asked him, what commandment is the foremost of all? That was from verse 28. Verse 29, Jesus answered, the foremost is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. One of the things that, um, why I just thought this was so important as we come to this, is ladies, It's always we want to come back to God. We want to bring everything back to him and under his view and and shake it out through his grid. And this here tells us the first thing is to love the Lord your God. And I just have to say, this, this made me smile. Jesus here is referencing the Old Testament, by the way. This is in Deuteronomy chapter 6. And um, Jesus is referencing the Old Testament. And this is uh, common to when the leaders would talk to Israel. And they would say, hear, O Israel. That's like they're calling together the family. Listen, hear, O Israel. This is for everybody. This is for the family. These are the words of God. It could be like, hear, O coffee family. Hear, O oh, Knox family. Hear, O oh, women's Bible study Tuesday morning. This is God's word that is going out. And he is saying, listen. So we should perk up. What does God want us to know? What does he want us to say? The Lord our God is one Lord. One God, the God of creation the God of your ancestors. It's our one God that we worship. Ladies, sometimes in the midst of um, maybe turmoil or just life that comes up, I just want to remind you of this truth. When the heat is up, go to what you know to be true. He's calling them, Hear, O Israel, hear, O women. The Lord, our God, is one Lord. Go back to that first. That's first. Always first. When you don't know what else to say, when your day is going awry, stop. (sighs) Lord, you are one. You are great. You are good. Whatever it is that you're learning, go back to that. Start there. Can you feel your blood pressure dropped just a bit because we're remembering who's in control. We're going there first. And that is why we always want to go there. And even as we look, um, did any of you have the tendency, sometimes when I look at the, when we take assessments or we look at other personalities or we look at other things, it's easy to compare. Maybe it's just me. And if it is, just that's fine. But sometimes we can look and say, oh, I wish I were so much more like this. I wish I were so much more organized. I wish I were so much more lighthearted. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. And on a really bad day, sometimes those thoughts can even turn to jealousy. Or that really bugs me about that person. Ladies, our gifts, the way that God has has built each one of us, let's take that all back to him. Do you have someone in your life who just ministers to you, who, who is that person who is steady and true? 
instead of us being jealous or or saying, I wish I were so much more like that, how about thank you, God, for the way you have gifted this person that shows me more of your love, that brings me back to the truth of who you are. That's what we want to do, ladies, as we celebrate these gifts. Not just for the gift themselves, or certainly, heaven forbid, not to lift the person up. Because it's it's God's bestowing. The Bible tells us, do your good works that others may see. And you think, what? That doesn't sound quite right, does it? Because there's more. That they may give glory to your Father who is in heaven. That's why, we, that's why we do this. That's why we serve. It's so that our God gets the glory. And as we are looking at these differences, ladies, as we are celebrating them, let's remember to celebrate the one who gives them. Bring it all back there, all the time, because he is so deserving. And as we look, let's remember that we love our God with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our soul, with all of our strength. We start there. And as we're so filled up with our love for him, it just overflows that we love others, right? That's what we hope to do. So many other things came to mind, too. It just was a huge plethora of information that was just going through my mind. And I just wanted to say to those of you who may be new to the area, maybe you're new in a season of life, and your relationships are changing, and you want want that depth of friendship. You're hoping for that depth of friendship. You're seeking it, that core Remember, it takes time. I was thinking about how our society, we are so quick. And if the first time that you call and invite someone to lunch and they're not able to do it, we we can just throw in the towel. And we think, oh, she really didn't want to go to lunch with me anyway. She's got way more friends. She's got this. She's got that. Ladies, our thoughts can go to the craziest places. It might not have anything to do with you might not have anything to do with us. I forget that, the, that, that other people have other things going on in their life. It, they're just not thinking about me all the time. And we can get our feelings hurt as we navigate through friendships. And I'm saying, let, let's give it a little time to grow. And let's give a ton of grace because we don't know what's going on on the other side of the door. And let's not assume that it has to do with us. Call again. I remember when we moved here now about 17 years ago, and we had come, we had a lot of core in California, moved from Southern California here for my husband's job, and, um, and I wanted that right away. I, I know I needed that. And I remember a friend telling me, Take a deep breath and just realize that those roots, you've got to give it like three years for those roots to grow until you start to feel like you have. And I was like, three years? I'm going to die. And so I went to prove her wrong. By golly, not me. <laughs> we'll get to that personality type in just a minute. So... I, I cannot tell you how many people we had over to our home. I was just calling people, please come for dinner, bring the kids, come into. We had so many people into our home because I wanted to find friends. I, I needed friends, and this is the way that we are going to do that, right? It makes sense in my head. And at the end of that year, I was so tired. And literally in that time, we had gotten one invitation to somebody else's home. And I remember that day, I can remember it to this moment, because when we walked into their home, I almost cried. Because we were being welcomed into somebody else's space. We were being invited in. 
and they hugged. They were huggers, which I was so glad. And they hugged us at the door and said, welcome. It was all I could do not to just crumble right there. And then they just probably would have said, do you need to go home? You know? I was so hungry for that intimacy and that friendship and those people that knew us and that we knew. And I understand that. But the truth was that after a year and that I was so tired and I realized that her words were, I had met so many people and so many people that I could look and say, I want to get to know them and I want to get to know them and I want to get to know them and they're going to be my great friends. But it took time. More than one dinner or a couple dinners or time together or a couple lunches. It took doing life together. It took calling and saying, ah, what are you having for dinner? I've got a pound of hamburger and a can of salsa. Give me an idea. <laughs> it took having the kids go to each other's houses. It took having one of my children mess up this other person's child's birthday party, and, and then we had to reconcile, and oh, that was not good. But this lady was so gracious. Time. It takes time. So I just want to encourage you, don't be discouraged because the depth isn't coming after the second lunch. Give it time to marinate and the roots to grow. And give that grace. Fight against the thought, she must not like me. I'm not good enough. I'm not the kind of friend she wants to have. Give grace to each other, oh women of Tuesday morning Bible study. We want to be there for each other. And this, again, I get, it must be that phase of life, like I was brought to tears almost this week, when I was thinking of our study. Ladies, we are here for each other. From the wisest of the wise, Pat Entz, we get to hear Pat Entz. Come on. And what I mean is that she has traveled a lot of life with her God. She has been faithful to him, and he has been faithful to her. And we get to see that. You have women in your group that, that are, have traveled the road ahead of you. And we get to see the faithfulness. And here, um, those of you in your 30s and your 40s and your 20s, you are making your roots deep. Nobody has arrived, just so you know. Some of us have just had a little bit more practice at failing and getting back up, at seeing God being faithful over and over and over. And I love sitting with these women that are ahead of me because often they seem so peaceful, don't they? And like words of wisdom just come out of their mouths. And I just think, how do they do that? Because regardless of their personality, you know what they've learned over the years? Learned is they've learned how to grow in the other areas. They've learned to be more compassionate or maybe not to talk as much, to listen more. They've learned to be in God's word is their life, breath. And so when they speak, they're speaking from what they know to be true. And that's based in God's word and who he is. And I'm not saying we can't do that in our 20s. I'm just saying that the more practice that we get, the more like Christ we will be the more we learn to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength that permeates our soul and it flows out to others. That's, our, that's what we're looking to have happen as we study these personality traits. 
So let's look at them, shall we? Because they're such fun. And we're just going to be looking at them just as an overview, not totally in depth. We're not going to memorize each one. And um, the ones I have gotten, we're going to start with red. We're going to start with red. And I wish I'd been able to use color on your sheets. Yeah, red. And that's kind of how they come into the room. I'm here. I'm in charge. By golly, follow me. Let's go. That's our red. That's uh, different ways that they're looked here. I've gotten um, much of this, what I've used today, is what they, uh, they use when they train up people to go to Royal Family Kids Camp. And what's interesting is they take the assessments, and then on their name tags, they have a color. They have a color. So that when you're talking to that person, you're aware of their tendencies. You're not putting them in a box, but you're aware that when they're maybe a little more abrupt and a little more, go, 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 let's move, let's move, you're not taking that personally. It's not like they're directing it at you. It's kind of who they are. And it just gives us a little bit of insight into how, um, how that person operates. The Lion, oh, one of my very favorite books called The Treasure Tree. And it talks about the four personalities, and it's four kids, and they're on a mission. These four personalities, they have to do something. So it brings out the strengths and the weaknesses of each one in a fun way. And the way that um, Gary Smalley and John Trent use, they use um, animals. And so this red is the lion. And maybe you've seen it um, given in other ways. And the reason I, ha I loved this layout was because if this is you, if you are the lion and you are the one who is in control and let's move, follow me, and don't ask any questions, just do it the way I want to do it. These are some goals that we might have if, if this is us. And then the understand section is so that when we live with those people, maybe we have a little bit more understanding of where they're coming from. Are we boxing them in? Are we boxing them in? No, but we're realizing that this is the tendency. This is the way they see the world and that we respond to the world. These people, we, we want to focus on the positive of this. And if this is us, we want to be aware because I love the part, um, build relationships, admit weaknesses, be more gracious. Sometimes our lions are just so ready to do the task and, and let's go that they forget to look at the people. They see the people as a means to an end. They're not trying to, to steamroll us. But we need to be aware of that. And, and for those that are close to us and for these friends that are in, in our life, it's help us to remember to how we can help them along to encourage a little two-way conversation. These kind of people, I just had to, these kind of people are the, are the kind almost that you could hit over the head with a two-by-four with what you have to say because they could take it and they often need that kind of jarring, oh, what? You know what I mean? I'm part this person just so you know. So I can see the areas that I have needed to work on in this area tremendously. We love our red people, though, don't we? They are great in a crisis. They do bring a lot of stability and peace because someone's in control. And when the world is falling apart or we feel like our life is, oh, it's nice to know that we feel like someone's in control, right? So as we relate to our lions in our life, let's just be aware of the strengths and the weaknesses and that we are looking at them through the eyes of our great God, celebrating those strengths and giving God the glory for those. And if we're close enough to come alongside and to help them uh, expand, because when lions learn compassion, and when lions learn to listen, it just makes them better leaders. 
And we get to have a part in that. If we don't uh, get our feelings hurt all the time, not that they don't need to be called into, into account, but I'm just saying we, cannot, we can think differently. Let's go on to our otter friends, our yellow people. That's yellow, by the way. And um, these are the people who are party, party, party. And then let's party some more. There's always a way to make it happen. Thank the Lord. This is me, just so you know. And praise God, I married a man who was more in, in a different category. Because I am always the, let's do, let's do, let's do. And thank goodness he can look and he can say, I can make this happen and this happen, but this you're going to have to let go of. Otters don't like to let go of things like that because you can make a way. There's always a way, isn't there? Sometimes here, um, these people can drive other people crazy. I know this. Um, because we tend not to be on time very often, ever. No, <laughs> I've learned, thank goodness, I've learned over the years. And thank goodness for my friends who have been able to be gracious and to realize it's not because I don't want to be with them. Otter people are in-the-moment people. So when they are with you, they are with you. They might have an appointment with you, but right now, they're with you. <laughs> I remember I had to teach this to my girls. Uh, my one daughter is very much a lion that we were just talking about, a red, very on the dot, boom, boom, boom. And my second, that's Markel. My second daughter, Katrina, is very much otter. No time, everything's fine, we'll get to it, and fun, fun, fun. Boom, boom, boom. That's what it was in our house, fireworks all over. And I remember sitting and talking to them, and I learned this from a wise mom who had three girls. And she, I remember, this was when my girls were little, so I didn't know. You see traits of it as they're going, coming up, but you don't realize how the fireworks will fly. But I remember her saying that she would build up each one to the other so that they could learn how to see the positive and the value in the other person and the way God had made them. And I remember telling Markel, I know you get so frustrated with Katrina that she's not on time or that she's so spacey or that she uh, doesn't do what she needs to do in the time that you think it should be done. But don't you love it when she's with you? Because she's with you. She's talking to you. She's giving you all her attention. And you love that feeling that you're the only one in the world. And we love that about her. And we love how she brings life to your soul. I didn't use that word, probably. But how she brings fun to your day, makes you think of something different. And I would tell Katrina, I know it's frustrating to you that it feels like Markel's on your case all the time to do this, this, and this. But you know that she loves you. She wants to help you make your life easier. And she's sharing her gift with you that if you put something in the same place, you'll get to find it later, and it doesn't take you 20 minutes to go pull the whole house apart. And then while you're looking for that item, you find this, and you sit down and start read a book. You know, you get to do what you're going to do. She loves you, and we love that about her. So I would encourage you, ladies, as, and as friends, and as women, when you're talking with other women about someone, Remember to, to build up their good and to give God the glory for those things. And your close people, the people that are close to the otters, they have, speak into them. Get a watch. Set a timer. Stop talking. 
Listen. She was talking to you. I know you were so excited to see her, her, and her, but she was trying to speak with you. Your attention was divided. The core friend. We're looking for that core friend who can speak that truth into our life. And then we have our peacekeepers, our green, our peacekeepers. And I'm not too worried about the screen right now, which is good because you've got it all in front of you. I know it's hard to read is what I meant. Uh, the animal here is the golden retriever. Oh, I love these people in my life. They are peaceful. They are calm. They are sensitive. They are listeners. They are loyal to the core. These are the people whose, whose hearts are so full of compassion. They see the needs around them. Thank you, Lord, for these people. They help the lion and the otter to take a breath. They come alongside. Sometimes they have a hard time saying no to anything because they don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. And let's not do conflict. Let's just make it all nice. Let's not talk about it. Let's just, let's just coat it over with some white paint, write smiley faces on it. You know, that it's too, it, they just shy away from that conflict. And our peacekeeping friends, how we need them in our life to come alongside. And we, who are close to them, come alongside them. There is so much to learn to see compassion and to see others through the eyes of Christ. To take them off of ourselves and to look out. And we can help them and encourage them to open up. Share their feelings, what's really going on in there. But they're going to need a little bit of time, focus time. That's practice for some of the other animals. And grace from our retriever, golden retriever friends. That they're not trying not to listen to me. I do have a voice. I can speak up. See how we're working together. We can already just see how the Lord gave us so many different people to come alongside. These are the people who we share with our deepest sorrows because we know they'll hurt with us and love with us and celebrate with us. Our golden retrievers are key. We want to be careful that we're not, I mean, when people, if someone doesn't speak up, it's kind of easy to, to blame them for things or to, to, to put the stuff that way. Let's remember, and our retriever friends to say, hey, that's not mine. But we're helping each other to get stronger in the other areas. And we'll go to blue, our planner, our meticulous folks that are in our life. They're, uh, in the animal world, they'd be called the beaver because they're making their dam. They're planning for winter. They're getting all their ducks in a row. <sighs> Thank goodness for these people. I am married to one of these people. I am married to a combination of a beaver and a golden retriever. I have needed this person in my life, and I can tell you that he has become more like Jesus because of me. <laughs> because by golly, this sweet man <laughs> has had to bring his steadiness, his order, his vision for the, for the future, for planning to this crazy one. We're learning from each other. 
the, the, in, in the beaver world, you can depend on them. These are the people who, if they say they're going to be there, you know they're going to be there. You, you would be shocked if they didn't show up. Praise God for these people that keep us on track, that are so dependable that we have something that we are sure in this life that is craziness. Sometimes they may tend to see the glass is half empty. Okay. Fill it up. Gives us a different perspective different side, although I have found that they can be very, very hard on themselves. Because in order to have all your ducks in a row, to have everything done just so, it has to be perfect, right? Or else it's not good. It could be so hard on themselves. If this duck is just a little off, it's okay with most of us, but for them, it's not. We can't do anything until all the ducks are in a row. That's never going to happen. Ever. Till we're with Jesus. That's a long time to wait for those ducks to be in a row. Take a breath. Hang out with an otter. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> They'll drive you crazy. But ladies, we need this stability in our life, don't we? We need some planning in our life, don't we? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we have people who can, we can count on. And as we're learning to grow in these different areas, as we're learning, as you can look and you can see where you are and you can see where you are not. And I would just encourage you, look at some of the, hang out with the people that are different than you. I think it's very dangerous to have, to have a whole committee or to have a work group or to have an office that's full of all the same kind of people. We're going to miss so much. You have a room full of beavers, that is going to be a quiet, <laughs> a very quiet, very mm, maybe humdrum ish. But if you have a room full of otters, nothing will get done. <laughs> but as the otters learn and hang out with those, they, they learn different things, vice versa. We're there for each other. God has given us to, to do life together. It takes practice, and we need to be gracious to each other. Christ told us in John chapter 13, verse 34. We, we were over this um, a couple weeks ago. But Jesus says in this verse, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. What? If we have love for one another. Love for each other, ladies. We're loving God. Love others. Jesus tells us, this is how men will know that you are my disciples. Ladies, I want people, you want people to know that we follow Christ, that we live life differently, that we are looking at life differently through a different grid, that it is our greatest joy to serve God. He. This is how people will know that we are his as we love each other. And as we go out in this week and you are rubbed up against or sometimes pounded up against those people who, who are different than you, who view the world differently than you do, 
Go back to what we know to be true. Go back to God first. God, how can I love you in this? How can I love this person the way you love this person? Help me to pray for this person. And if there are relationships, friendships, the first way that I'm going to encourage you, if there is strife there, start praying for that person. And you think, I don't even want to think about that person. But the truth is, we do think about them. They keep coming to our mind. Keep bringing them to the Lord and asking the Lord to change your heart. Bring his newness and his love and his perspective into that relationship. Pray for a new friend. Pray for depth to grow. Pray for our hearts to be patient. That as we're waiting for that core, that we're looking to Christ to be our core first. Lord, I pray that you would bring us back to you all the time with the joys, with the praises, with the sorrows, with the hurts. And may we look more and more like Jesus by seeing the world, seeing our friends through your eyes and loving them with the love that you give. In Christ's name, amen.